Uh, now I have pleasure in introducing the highly accomplished dignitary on the dais, Mr. Devesh Shivasa, sir. Mr. Devesh Shivasa is chairman and managing director, GIC of India, as well as current chairman of NIA governing board. Sir has been involved in the insurance sector since 1987, following his joining the industry as a direct recruit officer. He has experience in both direct insurance and reinsurance. He has gained international exposure through postings to GICD London's branch, where he was overseeing operations in UK, Europe, Caribbean countries of Brazil, Argentina, and Mexican territories. A key player in the setting up of GICD's Lloyd Syndicate 1947 in London, Sir is presently employed on a full-time basis by the company in the capacity of CMD. Additionally, she, Mr. Shivasa also is on the boards of GICD South Africa, uh, Limited, GIC Prestika, Russia, Ex ECGC Corporation, uh, Indian Register of Shipping, Ken India Assurance at Nairobi, Agric Agriculture Insurance Corporation of India, Health TPA Limited, Asian Reinsurance Corporation, GIC Housing Finance Limited, and GICD Corporate Member London. Sir holds a BSc Honours and a Master's Degree from St. Stephen College. He's uh, he subsequently obtained a postgraduate degree in management, majoring in marketing with a gold medal from the Management Development Institute, MDA Gurgaon. With this very brief introduction, I request you, sir, to please kind enlighten us by presenting the special address. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in welcoming, sir. Thank you, ma'am. That was hardly brief, I would say. Good morning, everyone. More than seven decades after we became a republic, India is rising steadily to become a global power. Our actions hold tremendous responsibilities for both our people and the world in general. This presents us with an opportunity and a mandate to envision that India that we aspire to create and the world order that we wish to shape. However, all of us would admit that we have miles to go, miles to go before we can reach that, to transmute our dreams into reality and actuality. Looking at the, geogra uh, the geographical boundaries and the population India has, the insurance sector has a plethora of opportunities to exploit the market, enhance penetration and its growth. We have witnessed a considerable rise in the penetration in the past few years, keeping pace as our GDP grew. A fully insured India may seem like a dream, but it is something that is clearly achievable even in a country where the awareness of insurance as a risk transfer mechanism is overshadowed by a very strong belief of fate. Currently, India's insurance penetration is pegged at 4.2%, for that is for financial year 21, up from 3.76% in 2019-20. With life insurance penetration at 3.2%, and non-life at 1%. In terms of the size of the insurance industry in India, the share of life insurance in the total premium is about 75% and general insurance makes up the rest of the 25%. In FY21, non-life insurers, which comprises of general insurers, standalone health insurers and specialized insurers, recorded a 5.19% growth in the gross direct premiums. Motor insurance accounted for 34% of the non-life insurance premiums, followed by health insurance at 30% in FY21. Post-COVID, rising demand for personal mobility space is leading to a shift in the vehicle ownership patterns and may create an opportunity for motor insurers. Health insurers witnessed a 13% growth in the GDPI in FY21. However, given the changing landscape of the market, we have a future where driverless cars are going to become a reality. Where will that lead us? Are we geared to accept the new normal when it develops? Fortunately, currently we have the tailwinds of the impact of COVID, which has generated tremendous awareness of the need for health insurance. It is now for us to convert this opportunity into a big push for the retail lines. If we step back and examine the raw material that we process, Risks are growing in stature and number everywhere. A decade ago, hardly any company had a CRO. 
when we started the ERM department at GIC Re, we were possibly the pioneers in the industry. How quickly this arm of governance has blossomed, offering us mega opportunities. Let us go back to the drawing board and look at what will sell. We need simple products which will cover losses. The current generation does not have the patience to argue with the surveyor and hence the insurance company and would rather pay that extra price to avoid unpleasantness. They need algorithms for their complete insurance requirements and not multiple policies. The premiums need to be staggered and not be a one-time outgo. I am not in any way suggesting a dilution of 64 VB, but it is something that we should be critically examining as a SOP for increasing penetration. The current generation would rather have technology do a bank debit than make a note in the diary, which obviously again is going to be a virtual one, that today or the next week the premium is falling due. The insurance regulator as well has undertaken various initiatives towards boosting the insurance penetration, such as permitting insurers to conduct video-based KYC, launching standardized insurance products, and allowing insurers to offer rewards for low-risk behavior. Digital insurance and online channels are expected to witness continued growth. The share of web aggregators within digital insurance has been continuously increasing and web aggregators currently originate 30 to 40 percent of digital insurance. This is the future. How would distribution channels change and shake the very foundation of an agency model may be required to be re into. The growth of the insurance market is being supported by important government initiatives, strong democratic factors, conducive regulatory environment, increased partnerships, product innovations, and vibrant distribution channels. It is important to understand that for this dream to become a reality, all stakeholders must contribute and work in tandem. The increase in FDI in insurance from 49 to 74% shall further help in driving increased penetration and coverage by enabling additional avenues for capital support required for the expansion of the insurance industry in India. To take a look at the growth drivers once again, the first, the favorable demographic factors, 68% of, of India's population is young and 55% of its population is in the age group of 20 to 59, that is the working population, in the year 2020, and is estimated to reach 56% of the total population by 2025. These point toward a young insurable population in India. The second point, a wide middle class expansion. By 2030, India will add about 140 million middle income and 21 million high income households, which will drive the demand and growth of the Indian insurance sector. The third point, the pandemic related shift in the demand patterns. COVID has expedited digital adaptation and 67% of the agents feel customers are more willing to use portals and apps post COVID. Further, the pandemic increased the insurance penetration rate and triggered awareness about insurance and demand for, for protection products especially health insurance, and that to retail health, that saw a big surge. India is poised for a great leap in economic growth. However, it is critical to address impediments like lack of infrastructure for the economy to achieve its full potential. This will address the issues of employment generation and demand supply mismatch in the country. At the same time, it is imperative that digital infrastructure and financial infrastructure are strengthened to grab the opportunities being created in the sunrise sectors based on technology. This will allow India to hitch its bandwagon onto the global engine of growth, thereby fastening socio-economic uh, socio development. Going forward, general insurance companies will be key beneficiaries of the opening up of the economies, especially with improved trade activity, increasing demand and rising disposable income that will enhance the insurance penetration for life and health segment. Our Honorable PM has envisaged a brighter India through his mantra, Sapka Saath, Sapka Vikas, Sapka Vishwas, Sapka Prayas. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for an insightful address.